My next guest is Congresswoman Young Kim from California. She's the ranking member of the Subcommittee on Innovation, Entrepreneurship, and Workforce Development, and she's also a small business owner herself. Congresswoman Kim, it's a real pleasure to be on with you, and I know you worked with my friend Ed Royce for many years, and we've encountered each other, but I want to say, you know, one of the things I, I, I like about the role you play, and I often think, you know, sometimes you have members of Congress or senators who are governors or mayors. Sometimes they were big company CEOs. But how many small business people are there in the in the Congress you found that understand the dimensions of what small business owners are dealing with? You know, uh, first of all, it's really great to talk to you, Steve, and I'm so glad that I'm part of this discussion today. Uh, before I went to, I mean, before I came to Congress and before I worked with uh, my former boss, Congressman Ed Royce, I was a small business owner. Uh, in the uh, garment uh, industry, fashion industry. I had my own uh, showroom at California Mart, uh, dealing with buyers and the national buyers wig and uh, going into uh, manufacturing of the ladies wear uh, clothing. And so I do understand what the small businesses face each and every day. And coming to Congress, uh, I, I found, I don't know exact number of my colleagues who have been a former business, but there are quite a few especially since I serve on the Small Business Committee, anytime we have conversation in the hearings or through our, for example, a couple of weeks ago, it was a national uh, small business week and we're holding roundtable discussions, inviting our small businesses from our uh, districts. We are always talking about my background in small business. I ran a business here and there. So there, I can tell you, uh, Steve, there are quite a large number of, uh, colleagues of mine that understand what the small businesses go through. And I think that's the reason why they put some of us on the small business committee, because we understand that. And especially now as we are dealing with COVID and uh, trying to help small businesses survive, keep their doors open. Um, you know, we, we're constantly working about those uh, areas and federal programs what can we do to make their lives a little bit easier? Well, I'm glad you framed it that way. And I also want to say, I remember the California Mart. You know, it's like near the 101 freeway and the 10 freeway, and you'd see it right over there on the right. So that's cool. Um, but I guess the, the uh, question about small business owners, most small business owners I know, they may care about you know, the quality of the environment where they're working, or they may want, you know, stability that they don't often think about what can I get from government. But, you know, when a lightning strike comes in like this pandemic and has, you know, creates a tsunami of effects that are very disabling. And we know a lot of businesses have not survived this. Some have innovated, but I'm interested in what you, what is the right social contract to support small businesses in a time where nothing that has happened has been their fault, but they've, you know, they, they're struggling in these times. Yeah, thanks for raising that. And let me first tell you the small businesses in my home state of California, during the pan, uh, COVID pandemic, I think they were hit the hardest. Hmm. I can tell you there were like 40,000 small businesses in our state closing. And half of those, that is like 20,000 plus, closed permanently. So hearing those heartbreaking stories of businesses closing their doors, uh, I think we all came together in a very uh, in a efficient way. Uh, we saw in 2020, Congress passing the first CARES Act to provide the immediate uh, support they need. And we also saw unprecedented amount of federal loan programs uh, through the uh, SBA. Uh, I heard over and over how small businesses have come to me and told me they were the lifeline of these businesses to keep their doors open, keep their employees on their payroll, and especially that Paycheck Protection Program allowed it to happen. And uh, so... Uh, I think what our job in Congress is uh, to continue to provide uh, policies that will allow small businesses to continue to be creative, continue to be innovative. During the COVID pan uh, pandemic, I saw, especially in my district, which is very diverse, we have a lot of uh, you know, ethnic communities and Asian restaurants trying to keep their doors open. And I saw utilizing parking lots, bringing tents, and continuing to serve their customers that way. But uh, California has more strict rules than other areas. Mm -hmm. So 
I think we, we saw a lot of them, uh, you know, really struggling. But I think what we're trying to do is obviously the programs that we helped with PPP and so forth, they were very helpful. But because, uh, you know, many of these programs were created so quickly during the pandemic and the SBA saw an unprecedented number of loan applicants, there were uh, difficulties in processing those. And a year later, when our committee is doing uh, oversight hearing, we found some uh, uh, issues with how we were dealing with it and we're trying to work through those. Fascinating. You know, Representative Kim, one of the other things I've been um, sort of fascinated by is how some businesses and how all of us, frankly, were pushed more into the digital space than we ever have before. You know, talking to our parents, talking to our loved ones, buying, you know, stuff on, you know, uh, uh, you know, from from marketers and whatnot. And, you know, FedEx and everything has just sort of grown enormously. But I remember working in the Senate um, for a senator from New Mexico many years ago, and he said, we have to help our state grow, and we're not going to grow if our small businesses are just doing each other's laundry within the state. We need to sell stuff to California. We need to sell stuff to Japan and China. And that used to be complex. And now there are platforms, there are opportunities for small businesses to say, hey, I can get beyond our neighborhood and I can do that. And I'm interested, you're, you're from California, and California has you know, not only a Pacific orientation, but a global orientation. How important do you think it is? I mean, we seem to have a struggle over internationalism in this country. President Trump pulled out of a trade deal in Asia. Joe Biden has not yet to my knowledge, initiated any great big new trade deals. Is that hurting business? Is that harming small business and, you know, robbing, you know, horizons of, of markets for them? Of course. Uh, again, my 39th district is part of Southern California, which we call the gateway to Pacific Ram. Uh, our constituents and state of California businesses rely heavily on our trades with our trading partners in Asia. Right now, during the COVID, there are containers after containers. I mean, they are just uh, locked at the ports. The goods are not moving. The trade is greatly affected. So this hurts our businesses. It affects the, uh, the supply chain. All of that is affecting. And so I'm very pro-trade uh, with our Asian uh, allies, especially uh, in the uh, Pacific Rim. I think we need to continue to provide our support there. But you also talked about uh, doing a lot of businesses online. And so many small businesses, uh, they continue to adapt to keep their doors open. And during that, that part of it, uh, you know, that includes our, uh, I guess, reliance on doing uh, online uh, businesses. And this pandemic made it very clear that our reliance on technologies will only continue into the future. And so we need to embrace uh, the new technologies in today's uh, changing economy. And I think uh, by doing it, we're also concerned about the protecting the cyber security of our small businesses. And that is crucial. And I think we need to uh, evaluate lessons learned during COVID-19 and create programs that are successful in the long term. Um, I joined my, uh, you know, Democratic co-chair uh, Jason Crow in introducing mm. SBA Cyber uh, Awareness Act. This is a bipartisan bill, and that is an initiative that would ensure small business administration to prioritize and improve their cybersecurity capabilities and report to Congress on their efforts. Um, this is a bill that was uh, passed out of the committee in July, so I hope the House passes that soon. Representative Killian, I'm, I'm your latest Twitter follower, and so uh, one of the things that I see in your in your in some of your tweets is um, a little bit of concern. We'll just call it a little bit of concern about the Biden White House's approach on taxes, on the economy, on debt. And you know, I remember being at a panel a couple of years ago, a few years ago where they had a bunch of very, very rich, successful business leaders from the Democratic business community and the um, Republican business community. I said, you know, is Donald Trump friend or foe? And every single one of them, Democrat and Republican, said friend because of a 21 percent tax rate. So, so I'm just interested in when it comes to the macroeconomic conditions in which small businesses are operating, what are the big concerns or blind spots you have or blind spots the White House has from your perspective or your concerns about where policy is going right now? Well, for example, let me talk about uh, where we are right now. The federal government already has uh, 
$28 trillion in federal debt. And we are currently looking at passing another, uh, you know, like $3.5 trillion uh, budget reconciliation through that reconciliation process. Mm. And we're also talking about another $1.2, uh, you know, uh, infrastructure bill. My concern, when we were passing or voting on the continuing resolution just this week, and that was yesterday, actually, it was brought uh, to the floor. Um, it included a provision to increase or raise the debt limit. That is unlike, I mean, unlikely to pass in the Senate. My concern was this is going to pass. Hmm. And we're going to add increased federal debt. We're already spending $300 billion, if not more, just to pay the interest payment on the federal debt we already have. I support continuing resolution if we cannot come together and pass a clean budget, bipartisan budget, but that is not happening. So the continuing resolution will allow our federal government to continue its operation. But the Democrats trying to include the raising the debt limit or debt ceiling is not the way to do it. I was really concerned about that. If we allow Speaker Pelosi and Democrats to move forward with this $3.5 trillion reconciliation package, our country could spend at least $5.4 trillion. And that's mm. more spending than quarter amount that we spend in the World War II. Mm. We just cannot afford to pass a blank check that allows mm. Democrats to settle future American generations with debt by raising the debt limit. And that's through the December 2022. So yeah. the Democrats are just playing partisan game over here because it's clear that isn't going to pass the Senate. Uh, I, again, support a clean continuing resolution to keep the government uh, running, but that wasn't the case. Especially I'm concerned about when we are at a 13-year inflation high and our uh, state across the nation, workers, businesses, and families, they're bearing the mm -hmm. brunt of high costs on top of already high housing costs. And so that's what I'm fighting, and those are my concerns. Oh, I really appreciate your candor um, on this, Representative Kim. Now, we have a question from our audience for you, and this question is from Cindy. Cindy? Hello, everyone. I'm Cindy Ramos-Davidson, and I am the CEO of the El Paso Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and the proud operator of two coronavirus relief centers in partnership with MBDA and SBA. We have been on the streets since day one, finding out what our community needs. So my question to everyone today is, Will there be additional capital access grants for the hardest hit minority small businesses, especially those with the lack of technology? Muchas gracias. Thank you, Cindy. Representative? Well, Cindy, thank you so much for those uh, uh, that very valid question. We are concerned about uh, providing more federal assistance uh, to keep the, uh, the businesses floating. Um, the Small Business Administration has various resources and programs that are available, especially in the minority, uh, women-owned, Hispanic-owned, veteran-owned areas. So I would love to work with you. Uh, at, please contact my office uh, if we can be of additional resource to you. But uh, part of the federal assistance, uh, especially uh, when I was talking to uh, you know Steve about earlier, the heartbreaking stories of businesses closing the doors we saw unprecedented amount of federal loan programs through SBA. Uh, we are having uh, hearings after hearings regarding what's next for those programs and what was successful and what can we improve in order to continue to provide uh, additional support for small businesses. One area was the, the restaurant revitalization funds uh, that was exhausted quickly. So we, um, you know, uh, we realized there was a need to replenish that uh, re uh, restaurant revitalization fund. So we did that. My focus is uh, when we had CARES legislation passed first time in March of 2020, and then again in December of 2020, uh, 2020 you're right. Um, we, there were some uh, funds that were unused from those CARES funds. So my focus will be really targeted. Let's use mm. the unused funds to help uh, businesses and get the funding out to uh, businesses like you, uh, instead mm. of raising more money. Throwing money at problems is not gonna solve it, right? So we need to be strategic, we need to be careful, and we need to be uh, targeted in terms of our efforts to help 
those targeted, uh, you know, programs and businesses. So there you heard it, folks. There is a fiscal conservative still in Congress. Uh, Representative Young Kim, it's a real pleasure to meet you. I, we, we get together one of these days. I hope you'll show me um, the clothing line you had uh, in the old days. But thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate you having me.